Let's shift gears now to the real estate space. By the way, in that context, Soba's Q2 update has come through. Uh, it's, the new sales are actually fallen both year on year and quarter on quarter. So that's interesting. 13.3 lakh units. The sales value though has gone up and realizations are looking very good. But in the context of more floods in Bangalore and all that's happened in the recent past, uh, the question is whether these realizations and prices will hold. Uh, we have uh, an entire discussion lined up. Knight Frank released their report for Q3. And they said that housing units sold have come in at a decadal high of almost 74,000. There's been a 35% year-over-year growth in Mumbai and a 21% rise in the units sold in the NCR region, even as interest rates continue to move higher. We are joined by Gulam Zia, the Senior Executive Director at Knight Frank, and Pavitra Shankar, the Executive Director at Brigade Enterprises. Um, lady and gentlemen, thanks a lot for joining us. Pavitra, I want to start with you. Um, the Mumbai market, you know, as Knight Frank put out their report, very strong sales coming through. Is that a market that would interest you? A lot of your peers have gotten into it as well. Uh, hi, morning, everyone. Uh, currently, our focus is actually on Bangalore, Chennai and Hyderabad. Uh, Mumbai, we know, is a great market. Again, it gets a lot of uh, uh, visibility. Uh, NCR as well. But um, for us, I think our focus currently is on the southern markets. Uh, this is the market uh, that we know. Uh, they all have uh, very good similarities with each other in terms of your target demographic, uh, in terms of buying um, you know, uh, preferences shown by customers, in terms of the IT economy as a driver. So we're confident with these markets that this is what uh, will drive our growth for the next uh, few years and for the near to medium term. So currently, no, we are not looking at Mumbai. All right. Hi, Pavitra. Morning. Uh, you know, uh, in the past, I think you've said that IT, IT, ES, uh, you know, bulk of your uh, or a large segment of your sales come in from that particular division. So good to see that the TCS management as well sounded rather optimistic. My question to you is that, you know, uh, RBI's high rates were around, what, 190, 200 basis points in this year so far. What kind of impact has it had on demand? And if you could give us a couple of numbers of your total sales, how much is affordable? And out of that, maybe out of your total sales, if you could give us a sense about how many of those buyers take loans to buy flats. Go ahead. Yeah, so in terms of our overall portfolio, affordable is what I would categorize as the government definition of below 45 lakhs and 60 square meters, at least in urban areas. A very small percentage, I'd say less than 5% of what we're selling today actually belongs in the affordable housing category. It's not really seen as much demand, uh, I, I would say, from like a larger developer where uh, it's really the size of the units that is making it affordable rather than, you know, the, the location of the place or the kind of amenities or specifications of the product. Uh, those are typically like our regular product. So um, almost 90% of our portfolio is mid-segment housing, and that's where we've seen uh, the, the to be the major driver of growth for us. Um, in uh, this segment, as well as affordable, uh, we see at least 50 to 60% of our buyers take home loans. I would have actually expected that number to be more even when home loan rates were lower. But across our portfolio, we see it as being only around 50 to 60%. Uh, and this is despite... Um, many of our buyers being uh, white collar salaried workers. So uh, the increase in interest rates, it is something to watch. Um, so far, we have not seen any impact, but that's mostly because of the kind of product that buyers are looking for today. They're looking for larger, um, uh, you know, larger units, three bedrooms, four bedrooms, and so on. And ever since the pandemic, this has been the type of inventory that is extremely high in demand and also very low in supply today. So when a potential buyer comes across the kind of inventory they're, that they're looking for, the increase that we've seen in interest rates is not going to hold them back. Uh, Gulam, uh, coming on this discussion, do you also believe that companies like Brigade, a lot of the uh, premium guys, you know, whether it's a Prestige, a Lodha, they really won't be impacted because of the uh, rising interest rates? I mean, you spoke about almost 74,000 housing units sold in Q3, which is a decadal high. Is this a sustainable level or do you think demand could get hit? because of rising rates? Uh, since you're only talking about uh, home loan interest rates, I would keep it to just that one factor, you know, because there are multiple factors that affect the sales and uh, performance of these uh, uh, players that you're talking about. Only home loan interest rate, I'll just give you one interesting number. Somewhere in 2010 or 11, I believe, uh, uh, the previous best performance in Indian uh, um, residential sales was attained. And that time, the home loan interest rate is almost touching 10%. Mm. Okay, so today we are still at least 200 bips away from that. 
So there is no reason for us to believe that at least in these markets, which are uh, you know the top six, seven markets, in the next couple of years at least we're not too concerned about home loan interest rate alone making that impact. Of course, affordability is the key. And right now, the affordabilities are well in place, while nominal price rise has been observed in last couple of uh, quarters. But that still is not disturbing the apple cart yet. So the point remains that, uh, you know, some little 50, 100, 150 bips increase in home loan interest rate is not going to have so much of an impact on the sales of residential units. Mm. Gulam, although we are already at 9, 9.5%, by the way. You know, uh, well, doesn't realize that slowly it's creeped up on us. Not really. The transmissions are not entirely, like whatever you're talking about, 190 bips of increase that we have seen from the lowest has not been completely transmitted. So I'm still talking about some time to go. Okay. Where we stand, even the SBI is not even touching 8.5%. It is below 8.5%. Okay. So that's where it is. The transmission is also the key. Okay, while maybe I need to talk to my banker because I'm at uh, over 9%. <laughs> <laughs> I'm telling you from personal experience. <laughs> Everything gone. <laughs> I, I mean, I'm not, uh, I wouldn't go that far, but yeah, it's, uh, and I know, I mean, uh, friends and uh, colleagues, etc. So it's, it's, you're right. I mean, maybe the full thing is not being passed in, which means that even from here, there is more to come. And you're saying there is no impact, Gulam? Uh, not really. We, yeah. we would have loved to watch that, but we've been very closely monitoring the numbers and uh, quarter after quarter, in spite of uh, at least three or four huge jumps that have come into home loan rates. In spite of that, the trans transaction numbers haven't really shrunk so far. And of course, it was uh, the the uh, Diwali period is also oncoming. So all this has really had an impact. We have good sales that we've been observing. But year-to-date sales have been best in last 10 years. We are almost about going back to the numbers that we saw somewhere in 10-11. So that's what is giving me some comfort that the buyers are still fine with the home loan interest increase that is coming their way. We'll have to obviously wait and watch for another one or two rises. How is the impact on the market? But so far, we have been observing not much of an impact. It's only going up. Mm. No, oh, that's good to hear. Uh, Pavitra, you know, I think I've asked you this before as well. Uh, the, the, you know, uh, for the lack of a better way to describe it, right, the pent up, uh, it's almost, COVID was a shock to the system, right? Uh, it's maybe 10 years, 15, hour, 15 years out, we'll be able to finally kind of figure out what it did uh, mentally to people as well. I mean, uh, because it really jolted the real estate uh, sales higher. People, uh, I mean, were looking out, they wanted bigger flats, premium properties, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So, uh, that push, I mean, is that is that still is that what is uh, still continuing? Uh, and uh, uh, it was also a big dislocation, right? You, you, you saved, you could not spend for a while, so you were sitting on savings and now that is getting released. So what's the what's the runway? I mean, how do you think about that in terms of the momentum continuing? Yeah, I would say the main thing that changed after COVID is a massive revaluation of everything in life. Mm. Uh, and that, that sort of came to uh, hit home quite literally, uh, even in the way uh, people were using their living spaces. So whether they were renting, whether they were in a two bedroom wanting to upgrade, Everybody was sitting there, you know, in, in their houses, sort of relooking at what they actually needed. And maybe some of these trends will go away. Maybe some of them will be here to stay, at least in terms of hybrid work or, or whatnot and the need for additional space. But what is clear is that people were um, very particular that they get what they want uh, right after the pandemic. And um, I, at that point, we didn't call it really pent up demand because we were seeing fresh interest. So it wasn't... Um, you know, something that was there on the sidelines, but not uh, translating into business. It was fresh interest for very different kind of inventory, which is also why most developers don't still have three bedroom and four bedroom uh, inventory. Like we all take three to four years to actually get the land, uh, get the approvals, construct and put the inventory out there. So it's quite a long cycle if you look at uh, trying to get a certain kind of inventory out in the market. Uh, the way we're looking at it in the long term is that... Uh, factor, but in the end, housing is a demand and is a requirement for our growing economy. So whether it is the increase in interest rates, whether it is 
who knows, a decrease in affordability because now people's savings are, uh, you know, uh, have been deployed, etc. There will still be demand for housing. And if they don't go for a four bedroom, they'll go for a three. Or if they don't go for a three, they'll go for a two bedroom plus study. So I think as a developer, we need to be mindful of those kind of trends and not worry so much about the overall market getting impacted, but really which segments of those will do better than others in the coming few years. Okay, all right. Pavitra, two numbers I wanted from you. Uh, the interest rate high well, maybe you're saying for the time being, people will be able to take it. But what about the price increases? Could you quantify what is the price increase that you've taken, say, in this fiscal so far? And also last year, I think the sales volumes that you reported was around 4.7 million square feet. For this year, yeah. what sort of a number by the end of the year are you looking at? A rough number will do. So in terms of price increases, we've been doing, um, you know, anywhere from 5 to 10 percent uh, over the last four quarters. Obviously, this is not across all projects. Uh, some projects where we recently launched, we've been able to take up prices pretty significantly, again, driven by what the market is allowing us to do. So if the product is, you know, uh, three bedrooms, four bedrooms, again, the kind of inventory that people want, uh, we're able to take up pricing because that is uh, kind of what the market is appreciating today. There are other projects where we may need to look at more of a volume movement. So uh, there also we are able to take up pricing, but more along the lines of, say, 2 to 3% a quarter. Mm. Uh, I think this is the time, though, for uh, larger developers who are seeing consolidation in the industry to do this and protect ourselves on the uh, cost impact and, and all the other factors that uh, we're seeing today. In so, terms of overall numbers, uh, we just closed our quarter and uh, I'm not able to give any guidance for the quarter or for the year ahead, but we are certainly pegging at doing significantly better than... Could you quantify year, significant right? single-digit growth, double-digit growth in volumes? Double-digit. Double, okay. Okay, uh, you know, just wanted to follow up. You said that for pricing, there was about a 2 to 3% impact in this quarter. Uh, in the commercial segment, wanted to understand from you, your area sold has gone up, but the value sold has come down. So just trying to understand, are you facing pricing pressure there as well in the commercial, in the leasing segment? And what kind of uh, growth do you see? Uh, on the commercial side, first of all, the sales of our commercial space is a very small uh, percentage of our total real estate sales. Um, I think it is just a factor of uh, the specific sales that got recognized in this uh, particular quarter. Uh, overall, the investment appetite for commercial has been good, uh, but again, it is more towards pre-lease spaces. Uh, so overall, we don't see an impact on the pricing really taking a hit. It is, I think it is just a factor of what got recognized over the last quarter. Okay, Pavitra, we leave it at that. Thanks a lot for joining in. So that is, uh, and Gulam, thanks to you as well uh, for being with us on this discussion. That's the word coming in on the real estate space. Uh, but let's move on now.